I think in many ways it also comes back to how Russia today generally remembers the Soviet Union, which is in a really de-ideologized way. It celebrates the Soviet Union, not Lenin. <laughs> Lenin's bad. It celebrates the rest of it because it sees Soviet Union as a great power, as, as still containing that historic essence of Russia. And um, just like some, some of the... Um, uh, some of the SARS did as well during the imperial period. But first of all, the Great Patriotic War is not World War II. The Great Patriotic War is just focused on the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union um, in June. So 1941 to exactly. 1945. And that's important because then you don't have to deal with the molotov ribbentrop um, which is awkward to say the least for the narrative. Though they they do address it sometimes, they find ways of justifying it. But this is a narrative where basically what you have when you strip it all back is the West invades Russia, because often the Soviet Union is conflated with just Russia, and Russia fights back and it has help, you know, from some of its um, from some of the other national Soviet republics, and those people are good. But it also has sort of nationalists who betray who betray Russia. It doesn't talk about its own collaborators, just about other peoples. And within this, there's a real focus. So you said earlier about how prominent the Nazi narrative is. And it's true, but that is mainly in propaganda for the West. There, it is still there in domestic propaganda, but it often will call Ukrainians Banderivtsi. And this is a reference, well, Banderivtsi in Russian, sorry, Banderivtsi in Ukrainian. And this is a reference to a man um, called Stepan Bandera, who himself actually spent most of the Great Patriotic War in in Auschwitz, but was the leader of a of a nationalist um, of a particularly radical wing of the nationalists, who some of whose followers took part in the Holocaust and um, in massacres against Poles who who lived in Ukraine. And this has been a core element, not just since twenty fourteen, actually, but but you know, much sooner to dismiss Ukrainian identity as something that is just reduced to, you know, these particularly extreme nationalists who lived during a bluntly very horrific time following the Holodomor, following World War II on Ukraine, which was, you know, not like the World War II Britain or America experienced. And to reduce, you know, people who essentially really just want accountability or to, you know, take part in what they see as kind of European democratic values to reduce them to make it as if there's something wrong there's something diseased with ukrainian identity it's just extremist and neo-nationalist and the only legitimate ukrainian identity is that of people who understand they're just russians little brothers and that they should be in unity and kind of subjugated really to to russian needs and that's where this element is important but a key part a key role that's played here is so-called memory wars so, for example, the the taking down of statues um, to sometimes to Russian writers, sometimes to people who were Soviet war heroes, but also had careers after the after nineteen forty five. Um, you know, where maybe, for example, in Prague with Marshal Konyev, where they took him down not because he was a Soviet war hero, but because of his involvement in the Prague Spring, which to me seems entirely legitimate. But that's not how it's. You know, reflected back in back in Russia, and there's this idea that Ukraine is trying to sort of destroy the memory of the Great Patriotic War, and that's just further proof. And it sort of makes sense when you come back to the de-ideologization of the Soviet Union, because really what you have is, if there's no essence where it's an anti-fascist struggle against Nazi Germany, really what Russia means when it says we need to restore the post-world order, we need to restore the primacy of the memory of, of World War II, is it means it wants to go back to a Yalta world order. The world order decided at Yalta, where essentially it controlled what happened in most of Eastern Europe. It had the right to sort of do what it wanted. So in a very weird roundabout, well, in a weird to Western audiences roundabout way, what you have is Nazis are simply people who do not like Russia. Nazis are people who do not want Russia to control Ukraine or the Baltic states or any other country because they are people who are challenging the World War II, you know, the post-World War II order that Russia won through the blood of its citizens liberating Europe. 
And actually, when you look at it that way, you can start to see, not that it's correct, it isn't, but you can start to see why it appeals to normal people. Because, you know, the memory of the Great Patriotic War, it touched an awful lot of people. I mean, proportionally more in, in Ukraine and Belarus, but still it touched an awful lot of Russians and it's, still, it's very there. And as I was saying, and as I kind of detail in the book, the Kremlin has done a lot to make it in people's everyday life. So whether or not that's because your son goes to an after school camp where he recreates the battles, whether or not it's because your daughter goes to a summer camp where she learns how to conduct inform historical information campaigns to protect against those who would discredit the Russian narrative of World War II, whether or not it's the murals on the your sort of apartment block, all of these different ways, all of these different elements, they all contribute to making World War II, first of all, part of your everyday life, but also that sense that it's under attack. You know, your most sacred memory is under attack from the West, from Ukrainians who were supposed to be your brothers, you know, in their view. And it creates this sense of you are the victim and anything you are doing, you violently or aggressively that some other people may see it. Well, they're wrong because actually what you're doing is you are defending not only yourself, but what is right. Because who disagrees with defeating Nazi Germany, right? You don't disagree. I don't disagree. So it's actually very clever and it works on that level. And I think people have been very dismissive of it because it's something that really resonates.